you just tuned in with we Defiance the, the Dawn, Dawn, live on the chopping block. Prepare to level the game with the knowledge of street science. Turn your speakers up and let's get into it. Oh, that hurts so good, man. That's the shit to remember. What is going on? What is going else. on? <laughs> what is going on? Welcome once again to an episode of the chopping block. I am Defiance the Dawn, your host. Corey Austin, whatever you know me as, but uh, welcome, welcome. It's a good day today, another episode that we done made it through. I'm glad that I'm able to go ahead and chop it up with y'all. This is my third episode, and good that actually we're going to keep this thing going. Really happy about the feedback on the last one. I want to go and keep something really rolling through with the momentum, Y'all probably hear me right now. I'm a little under the weather, so been uh, sick trying to knock this little cold thing out. I don't know what's been going on, but uh, this this little bug going around. But in my house, I got I got five people in my house, and I'm the only one that got it. So I I don't know what it is about this time of the year. I had uh, something I think uh, this time around last year. It's maybe a change in the weather or something of that matter. But anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, What are we entering about the second week into 2019, two weeks in? And I hope everybody's week is going good. And um, you guys are really making some headway into those power moves that y'all was really wishing um, and thinking about whether you were going to be this brand new person or you were just going to be that nigga for 2019 well i hope that that's what's going down anyway my plans ain't changed stick to the script and i'm just out here trying to get it so to my fellow hustlers you know what i mean we're just going to keep this ball moving and ain't going to stop so it's been crazy like right now there's so much going on in the media like always so much out there that i can't keep up with it all but i'm sure that whether you're on social media or you're watching television or whatever it is you catching a little drift of some of the things that have been out there but i've been trying to keep up where i can and still run my own business and everything that needs to be done because ain't nothing gonna stop no matter what's going on i still gotta do what i gotta do just like y'all gotta do what y'all gotta do but yeah i seen i seen some crazy stuff i did take a look at that whole thing that was going on with the straw attack at mcdonald's now that was crazy that was crazy the dude came in and he was just i guess frustrated about the policy that they had with the straws like they weren't um handing them out in the meals anymore and he came and he snatched up this young black girl that was working behind the counter after having some words with her about her letting him know that hey sir we don't we don't give the straws in the meals anymore and he went ahead and snatched her up and she let off a flurry on him. If you ain't seen the video, I'm sure it's been viral. Everyone's seen it. So, yeah, she let off a flurry just going ahead and knocking his ass just back. And it was real um, sad to see that a lot of people were just standing around, just kind of letting it take place. And um, I think that we have a very, I guess stand back and camera ready society everybody's got their camera phones and no one really knows how to step in and do the right thing but that sister yeah she handled herself and she handled herself accordingly so it's just that no one should have to be left to defend themselves over an aggressor like that over a man that is twice or three times their size and twice their age I came from a time that you seen anybody that we see a woman getting messed with or you see anybody getting picked on when it's someone that's obviously has the higher advantage, you step in. 
you step in and you do something about it you just don't stand around you make sure that you make a safe and viable outcome for the person being victimized and that's what we have to go ahead and do a lot of these young brothers they could definitely step it up um i don't know what it is today whether it's you will get ostracized by police or whatever but it's got to be more done it's got definitely you shouldn't i don't care who it is when you see david and goliath's situation if you could mediate help or even go ahead and disband the situation just eliminate the threat on a level where you you just subdue them then maybe that's what you need to do because um it's nothing good about just only grabbing your phone it's great that the phones are out but I mean, we got to get away from only wanting to just take pictures and just video but not want to go and be personally involved it's that's just crazy um but yeah on another note i did see what's your name the uh Centoya Brown. Now that situation was interesting. And I'm sure everybody knows about the girl that um, she had killed her aggressor, a John, that she went to see. She was working the streets. She, she was forced into a situation of having to go ahead and use her body to be able to get money. And uh, she had an, actually killed one of her tricks and she ended up doing you know, a lot of time for it. I think it was like 15 years or something like that from the time that she was young and being put into that from the time the prosecution happened. She was about 16, but she had been forced into this uh, sex slave situation from even younger than that. And so seeing that she was able to get out of that situation and a lot of people came to bring light to it and they were able to um, get her out. That's actually one of the few stories that I can say, man, that was that needed to happen. That was good. That was positive because there's only so much that you can really pay society in debt before there has to be looked at a level of rehabilitation that also is equivalent to the circumstances of a crime. Um, you can't use the one size fits all approach for everything because a lot of things are circumstantial. You know, things are different based on the experiences and the story of what happened. So uh, you have to definitely look into that. And I'm just glad that it was enough people that used their platform and their power to be able to bring justice to that situation. So a lot of things going on and glad that we're able to see where people could come together and do some beneficial work, actually, rather than maybe something that's more detrimental. But yeah, and then... What else we got going on? And then everybody is, of course, the, the internet and media is just set ablaze with the surviving R. Kelly. The R. Kelly situation. And I, I don't want to beat the dead horse or really kind of magnify it. Because it's a situation, I think, that has polarized people surprisingly to me. Surprisingly has polarized people. And uh, I watched about half of that. Maybe maybe more than half. Watched about more than half of it. It's usually really not uh, my thing per se, but... What I did notice was not so much about the case because there's some heinous and hideous things um, definitely done that no one that is myself or anybody that I ever rolled with would ever co-sign any of the stuff that's being accused. That's just uh, from just from the gate. That's just awful and horrible. But outside of that, 
it's interesting to me when I was just kind of diving and dipping through social media, seeing a lot of this stuff that I call and I see as a little bit of this fake outrage. And I guess the reason why I say fake outrage is because this stuff that we know is not new. This is not new information. You know, there's, I guess, details that have been elaborated. And I think that some of the stuff still needs to be fact-checked. But there's nuances that have now been told that might be unbeknown to people. But I guess the overall gist of what's being accused, hearing, if somebody came to me five years ago and said, oh yeah, you know R. Kelly likes young women, I wouldn't be like, oh no shit. Like if they came to me 10 years ago, this is something people have been knowing for 20, 25 years. So I look at it and I see a lot of celebrities. Celebrities I actually like and respect, rappers and are the musicians, R&B artists, uh, entertainers, actors, actresses. It's crazy just at how they're just going ham about this. And it's not that it's not something people shouldn't be upset about. But my thing is, for people that I've seen in entertainment since like the 90s, How is this something that is, I guess, all of a sudden an enlightenment to you? How is this something revealed? People in entertainment know what kind of circle each other runs with. They kind of understand and know stories. If we knew stories in the 90s as fans, then... If you're in Hollywood, you know, it's like people know that Jamie Foxx is known to throw extravagant parties. Now, that's just us on the outside. So if you're really in Hollywood and entertainment, you have a very good idea of what kind of stuff his parties are like, what kind of stuff he does. For example, so for people to act shocked all of a sudden, like they didn't already know, it's just like, why are you all of a sudden really, really upset about it? When this whole time, everyone's been knowing. So why now? Why now? And that's kind of the thing with... um when we look at the Hollywood and entertainment, a lot of times you'll see that celebrities will jump on a bandwagon based on how many other celebrities or of their peers are swaying any particular way. Most of them look to each other to see who's going to say something and put themselves out there first and how many of them will start jumping on that and then others will begin to jump on it too and it creates like this this massive wave of people swaying to a certain side now i mean there's uh, of course there's other things you know we can look at yeah i mean r kelly definitely he would be in jail if it if it was white girls just like bill cosby or anybody else or it would have been it would have been something you would hear more from the dominant society if it was like even Tiger Woods situation or things like that OJ Simpson those types of things yes it's it's a sad it's a sad reality when we end up looking at this it's a it's a very difficult thing when it comes to the level of what's witnessed 
with black girls is often overlooked. I still even talk about how a few years back there was a big overlook 59 black girls that went missing from DC. That was around 2017 that they started talking about it. And people slowly shifted away. And how do you have almost 60 girls in a short period of time just gone? Nobody knows. And the investigations come to a dead end. And there's not much said. And that's just crazy. It's just crazy that those types of things create a layer of amnesia for people where a certain type of person can become so invisible that people get amnesia and soon slowly start to forget about it. And it's just um, very interesting how some of these movements and some of these political organizations, they end up being very subtle and very quiet during that time. Whether it's the Me Too's or whoever else, you don't hear a whole lot. But you also see, when I was watching it, what was interesting is that the commercials in it were the very swayed toward charity organizations for sexual abuse and this and that. A lot of organizations that weren't ran by people of color or anybody that was black. So it was interesting to see that there was a gravitation or asking for a lot of monetary contribution, but I don't know how that was really going to affect or help the actual accusers. So we have to look at all these things and then also... um That kind of brings me into some of what I want to talk about, where we go into looking at the parents and being able to talk about some of this stuff that happens to us individually or in a family. Parents were and the foundation that we really invest in ourselves, in our kids, in our family structure, what's what really happens that somebody can kind of make those types of power moves and feel okay and secure with being at those ages. And it's really important that we understand these things. And it's not that this whole situation is unimportant, but it's another theme as we we go on, and if you noticed, um, every week there's a new theme. And it's a running program that takes place. And that program is just like software that they go ahead and they roll out updates. And that update, and you'll be running a new program. And that's what ends up going on. It's a program that's consistently keeps people kind of under this guise of distraction. Where they, um, a popular saying is, never let the right hand know what the left hand is doing. And you kind of run things that way. The level of thinking ends up being swayed with emotional, very strong feeling attachment type influences. And that's what we end up dealing with. So how do we, how do we end up being able to maneuver through the course of something like that? How do we end up being able to spot these new programs and these updates and being able to still maneuver without being swayed and distracted 
uh, manipulated in uh, these various forms and tactics. And that comes into really learning how self-independence is a powerful tool. Independence can be very powerful. What do I mean by that? Being able to claim that inner independence by seeking levels of isolation, giving yourself that time of silence to be able to think, to be able to come to an awareness. Great ideas are formed in isolation. Great ideas are formed and invented when you're able to think. And sometimes being able to unplug Not permanently, but giving yourself time to unplug from all this. Whether you need uh, once a week or a couple times a week. Being able to step back and really detach yourself from time to time is what's going to allow you to build that mental strength. And it it sounds like, well, why? But you'd be amazed at how much you're able to go ahead and allow your mind to heal, rejuvenate, and come back fresh. You have to take that break period. You have to be able to rest and allow yourself to become evolved, get evolved, rather than involved, rather than involved in every little dispute, every little thing that you see, letting it take you whole, evolve yourself. Learn how can you build up your inner strength Rather than trying to affect the outer world. Ain't saying that that's not something that you want to do. But maybe you're not in a position to do that yet. You have to start with yourself. Then you can go ahead and begin with your family. Then eventually you could contribute to your community. There's layers and steps that have to take place. To continue to build out, first you have to be able to build within. And that's the key. Um, A lot of what I see within the family and especially when we look at the parenting and what's what ends up happening is there's been a disconnect been a disconnect of any real structure and having any real ideals or principles those have all been lost when I, even I look at the situation with a lot of these girls the value that they put on themselves was at an all time low there's no grounding foundation and even if you look at a house In order to build a home, in order to build structure, first a foundation has to begin. And that's how you build all things, even when it comes to principles with people. A foundation has to be formed in order for a structure to be built on top. And it's not so much structure where... You're telling somebody this is what they need to do. This is where they need to go. And setting guidelines and rules. 
I think guidelines and rules are very different than somebody having boundaries. And boundaries are different because that says what I will not do. What I won't do. Not what someone says I can't. <coughs> Alright, I want you coughing. <coughs> but no, it's boundaries. What I will not do. And that's where you have to be able to have that connection. I look at being able to create that foundation where it comes from an individual. It has to go down to the core. You have to have a spiritual connection, a spiritual foundation. That doesn't mean a religious one. That doesn't mean that you have to embark on gaining a title of being a part of something. You are already a part of something. You are a part of something grand, something big, something cosmic. But you have to be able to understand your place in that and your connection to it to be able to understand the foundation that can, that can be built from it. So having that automatically, strong individuals, if you had 10,000 strong individuals, that would be an army. Broken down in 10,000 with subdivisions of strong families, you know? And that's where we have to be able to look. Uh, no, no one's really going ahead and giving themselves boundaries of what they stand for that's why we got people that will fall for anything and this has to start from an early age this has to start being embedded from a very young age these adolescents they have to be able to learn my young people you have to be able to listen and i'm saying this because that's what it comes down to a lot of people, by the time they get to the age 25, they think they know it all. They think they got it all figured out. There's nothing that you can tell them. They already kind of form their opinion of how the world works and how they're going to see the world. So there's not much that you can go ahead and offer, but for your young people, for your kids still growing, for that family structure, you have to be able to go ahead and offer something a little bit more being able to give that foundation that they can start growing with where they can understand some principles and some boundaries to set for themselves something that they stand for so they don't fall for anything and these young girls they're what what type of value was really emphasized for them where did they hold their worth and that's that's important that's really the key cuz now you got everybody feeling like they they know somebody everybody's running around and uh, they talking about they woke and I don't even like using the word because it's so oversaturated the phrase but everybody's woke now Everybody's regurgitating something that they've heard from somebody else, either just to debate on social media or just to, for the sake of feeding their ego. But who is really woke? And I'm talking about not just in what you say, but in their actions. What are you feeding yourself? What are you feeding to the young people that are around you? It's imperative that as a community, as a people, we understand this stuff. I don't think we understand how powerful the forces are that are out there working against us. And 
I'm I'm not just talking about <coughs> dealing with celebrities or things like that. There's a very strong dynamic that's put out there that you have to be able to work against in order to be able to survive. Got them talking about the government shutdown. It's nothing new. It happens every five to ten years or so. But people with EBT, people with government aid, people that rely on this, now they're in an adverse situation because now they have the inability to be able to provide. You weren't supposed to stay on any of that. But they have developed this codependent relationship that forms something extremely unhealthy. And it ends up showing the adolescents, the kids in their family unit, that dependency is a natural state of being. Instead of finding ways that they can evolve. Let me tell you something. We are living in what is a social experiment. Do you know the dumbing down of people has been made very deliberate? They keep people inebriated through different levels of social discourse. It's a way of compartmentalizing people into different groups. Stuff gets deep, man. I mean, I think during, it was, uh, what did I say, during the 1940s, uh, around the time of the Second World War, uh, they had actually an organization that was formed. It was called the Tavistock Clinic. It was a British institution. Later on, they became the Tavistock Institution of Human Relations. They're based out of England. What the clinic did, they had worked on innovating large-scale projects during World War II. And from there, they were able to attract investors such as like the Rockefeller Foundation and many others to go ahead and pour money into them. But they present themselves on the surface. They always have as a focus group for social sciences and contemporary issues. There is actually uh, one of the great authors on some of this information was Dr. John Coleman. He wrote a book talking about the Tavistock Institute and their study of psychological warfare and how their interests were to change the paradigm of modern society. What Tavistock actually does, they train governments and media how to rule their countries. They're the training ground. They train heads of these institutions on how to rule over people. You go there to study human relations on a whole different level. And from their inception, they had always placed a strong emphasis around American education. So... They had, from a very early time, decided they wanted to change the way that American adolescents think. Told you, we're a social experiment here. They decided around the 1950s that they wanted to go ahead and roll this out by introducing um, certain types of music, different types of drugs... You know, that's why you started to see a lot of LSD start coming out in the late 50s and 
six going into the 60s you started seeing a change from the 1940s into the 50s and the rock music and how it started to go ahead and create a rebelliousness they wanted to go ahead and create this rebellious type of attitude against the status quo their means and their interests were only to do this to slowly break apart the family structure. That's what their goal was. If you look at how things have played out from decades ago, talking about 60, 70 years ago, and now more people are raised in a single parent or out of a broken home than ever before. Most people don't end up staying together. Most people um, end up, you know, having marriages that end in divorce at a high rate. Now, I'm not here being the moral police. I'm just stating the facts. You can go ahead and look from that time till today and see where the growth was. So where they started working at being able to break apart this family structure, this made it easier for the state and federal government to be able to intervene and influence. You see what I mean? So when we go all the way back and we start looking at the level of parenting and involved that takes place in shaping foundations, why it's so important, because there's a force working against you to break it apart. This is all well documented. Anybody can go look this up themselves that has the knack to study, has the knack to research. You know, so it's imperative that we start teaching our young people about ideals and principles to stand by. Health. Economics. Spirituality. Not because everyone has to run around perfect, but we need to have people that have some self-identifying boundaries that don't allow them to get swayed so easily. We start building up strong youth. We start building up strong individuals. We start building up strong families. We start building up strong communities. This is how we combat what is being thrown against us. Well, anyways, that's what I wanted to go into. Um, I, my, my voice is feeling rusty, like, like it needs some oil or something like that. Um, I'm just holding, holding on right now, but... Um, I hope that a lot of that made sense. I'm glad that I got to chop it up with y'all. wasn't uh, too too long of a show, but I wanted to go ahead and, well, yeah, we, we went in a little bit. But, you know, it was all good. It was all good stuff. But, by the way, um, all my music artists out there, make sure that you check us out at imperialhustle.com. Pick up a lot of good information, advice, guidance, marketing tools, Things that can help you with being able to get your music out there. Um, I'd love for y'all to go and get evolved. Jump online and go to infinitelifelive.com. That's where I have my t-shirts with motivating sayings. Things that can set it off where you feel good. You feel fresh and you're wearing something that represents intelligence. So go to Infinite Life Lived. It's an immortal way of thinking. It ain't going to die. So 
want y'all to then support that and uh, hope that y'all enjoyed the show leave me some feedback some comments let me know what y'all think you can also download the show on spotify on um, apple music itunes you can also go to anchor podcast and the website for defiance will also be dropping soon where i'll have articles that i've written and this podcast my music yeah i've done spitting too so y'all be able to hear some of my artistry and just really get to fuck with me and how i get down and uh, let's just go ahead and get it together let's let's start building up this family let's build these communities let's just go ahead and and get it in man there's no reason why we can't go ahead and really build up our own and keep on connecting because we really need to that's how it needs to go down we ain't need to let anybody else come up in and tell us how they're gonna run our shit we can run our shit and we can run it thoroughly so that's what i'm all about that's the new gangster the intelligent thorough shit being about your shit and raising your goddamn family and making sure that you holding it down whether you with the other person or not but being there and being able to go ahead and paint our future the right way. So I'll talk to y'all soon. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Peace.